Tonight on Life on the Rock, we have Pete Barak, director of ID 916. I'll take you against the current. We'll see a short film from the Colorado Vincentian missionaries and much more. Welcome to Life on the Rock. Tonight our guest is Pete Baruch. He is the director of ID 916. Tell us a little bit about ID 916. What does it mean? Well, it's intentional discipleship, and it's geared to go into the parishes and really start forming a young adult uh, ministry about the ages of 20 to 30 to get them more involved, to build up a prayer life, a community, and really to teach them and be well-grounded in the faith. It's to form them to be intentional disciples, disciples. to form a, a community, to evangelize, to draw mm -hmm. others to that community. That's it. And uh, 916 is 1 Corinthians 916, woe, woe to me, me if I, I do not preach the gospel. gospel. <laughs> so they feel that fire and they want to spread it. And that sense of mission builds community. Our young people need community uh, so badly in this day and age. We'll also go to Against the Current with Father Mark. And we'll now go to a uh, Message on Volunteering by the Colorado Vincentian Missionaries. Sewell Child Development Center is a preschool for children with and without developmental disabilities. Here they learn, play, and grow together in the same classrooms. No child is ever separated from his peers because of his condition and the therapy it might require. Rather, therapy is done in a way that all can be included and no one is made to feel different or estranged from their peers. One of our little guys has muscular dystrophy, which means his muscles are slowly deteriorating and will continue to do so until he ultimately passes away. After all, the heart is a muscle. His parents recently told him about his condition, not that he will die, but that soon he won't be able to walk. He has moments of deep sadness and anger, moments where he lashes out at the other kids or at us, his teachers. But then he also has moments where he is running around the classroom dressed up as a superhero, where he's just another kid, playing, present, unconcerned with what might happen tomorrow. A couple of weeks ago, we did a spirituality night based on suffering in our community. I've been thinking a lot about CJ's suffering, why it exists, if there's a reason, and what good could possibly come of it. After talking about it in spiritual direction, I have come to no other conclusion than the fact that I see Christ in him in a way I never could have anticipated. On our fall retreat, we read and reflected on a scripture passage where Jesus is in the temple and heals a crippled woman who has been bent over for her entire life, unable to look anyone, let alone Jesus Christ, in the eye. Suddenly, because of him, she can. My whole life I have been taught and have believed that Christ is present in the marginalized. He is in the poor, the sick, the outcast. If we seek God, that is where we will find Him. There is something very different, however, in experiencing this firsthand rather than hearing it in a homily. I see Christ in CJ. I see Him clearly in His eyes. And though He is the cripple, I am the one who has been bent over my entire life. And for the first time, I am looking up into Christ's very real, very human eyes. CJ has allowed me to stand up. He has at once shattered my image of God and brought him together into one picture, one person. As CJ gets sad and frustrated, I am reminded that Christ, as a man, also felt those emotions. As he runs through the classroom in his light-up Batman sneakers, squealing with glee, I hear what it might have sounded like when Jesus laughed. I know deep within me that Christ, God, knows intimately what it feels like to suffer as man. He knows it in its physical, spiritual, mental, and emotional realms. He knows because he went through it in a way I can't begin to imagine. And knowing that this is something our Creator and CJ have in common gives me solace. So while my image of God is shattered, it is beautiful. Light reflects off of each new piece in a different way. But while I rejoice in that, I do so wishing that there was some way to make it so that CJ's condition could just disappear. I wish his body weren't decaying and just coming into life all at once. It is something only God knows the reason for and creates a void that only God can fill.
Pete, welcome to Life on the Rock. Thank you. And you are the director of ID916. That's correct. What is that? Yeah, great question. So the, our mission is to form young adults into intentional disciples of Jesus Christ. Okay. Uh, the ID stands for our identity. Okay. It's to be an intentional disciple. Mm -hmm. And then the 916 comes from 1 Corinthians 916, where St. Paul says, For if I preach the gospel, this gives me no grounds for boasting, for necessity is laid upon me. And then the part that really struck us was, Woe to me if I do not preach it. And the idea being that preaching the gospel wasn't something extra that St. Paul did, but intrinsic to who he was as a disciple. That's right. And especially today, we really need to preach the gospel, especially to our youth. And what part does ID916 play in reaching out to the youth? Yeah. So we're primarily focused on people in their 20s, 30s, married, single, with or without kids. Okay. And uh, what we discerned was, you know, there's lots of excellent high school ministries out there, lots of campus ministries, but then in the typical parish experience, yes. there's just not a lot going on a lot of times yeah. for this age group. And so we wanted to come alongside parishes and help them build a community of missionary disciples that uh, are responding to the universal call to holiness and the universal call to mission. You know, the great commandment, love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. So we want to help young adults grow. We want to help them grow in holiness, grow in an understanding of the faith, grow in relationship with each other, and then ultimately respond to the universal call to mission, the Great Commission, to go make disciples of all nations. And so we want to do that right in the heart of a parish, specifically targeting this age group. Okay. And what are, what are the four pillars of the ID916 way? Yeah, so. great question. So, uh, you know, if we say we want to help young adults become intentional disciples, well, then what's an intentional disciple, right. right? And so we did a lot of research and tried to figure out what the popes had to say, what scripture shows us, and basically a disciple is a learner, right? right. They're an apprentice. They're becoming like the master in his character and in his competencies, like being who Jesus is and doing the things that Jesus could do. Um, and so we tried to pick out kind of four areas that we wanted to focus on. The first is conversion. Second is communion. Third, orthodox in the fourth mission. So a disciple is converted, living in communion with other disciples, embracing the full teaching of the church, and then actively engaged in the mission of his or her master, which is to seek and save the lost. Especially that last one, really being active and how important it is to really be active in the parishes. Can you kind of talk about that? Yeah. So, you know, often we, we think of church yeah. as this thing we attend where we receive something. Right. And then the rest of the week we kind of do our own thing. Right? Yes. And if we think about a, prayer, a parish properly understood is not just the four walls of the building, but the whole geographic area that the parish is responsible for, all the souls in that area. And so if you think about church from that perspective, it, it flips it on its head that we come to uh, the parish for mass and for the sacraments and for community life and things, but ultimately to be launched out. You think about how mass is, is ended, mm -hmm. go in peace, you know, go build the kingdom, go out and share the good news with others. And so part of what we're trying to do is, is gather those who are in the pews, who are believers, who are trying to grow as disciples, bring them together, support them, train them, equip them. To what end? Not to just create another good Catholic fishbowl where we kind of right. pat ourselves yeah. on the back. Isn't it great that we're here? It's not a checklist. It's not a checklist. And, it, and it's certainly, we almost try not to be even a group. It's more of like, how can we live as an extended family on mission together? living common rhythms, supporting each other, bearing each other's burdens, really living an Acts 2 way of life uh, where we're deeply integrated into the culture, but living differently and trying to be, you know, the salt of the earth and the light of the world. And also another pillar is orthodoxy. Mm -hmm. A lot of us today kind of grow up, uh, maybe not understanding the, the, what the church teaches and how we're just our religious upbringing, but so many of our youth want to know the truth, want to know the faith. Yeah. Can you talk about that? Yeah, so orthodoxy is kind of an old-fashioned word, yeah. right? And then sometimes misunderstood. It, this is not so much a kind of a, an angry, kind of uh, re overly legalistic right. kind of religiosity that we're talking yeah. about. We're talking about right worship. We're talking about entering into the beauty of the truth that the church gives us and how we're supposed to live. Now, most young adults uh, need to be converted first before they see the beauty of the, exactly. of the orthodoxy yeah. of the church. And so for many, many years, it was always like, if you behave the right way, then you'll believe, and then you'll belong with us. And what we found is it kind of flipping that around. Let's belong together. 
let's then lead you into belief. And then we're, we're going to talk about how we need to behave. Yeah. Uh, let Jesus be the filter by which we see the ways we're supposed to live our life, as opposed to just a set of rules and yeah. kind of this moralistic, don't run on the grass. Well, it's like, yeah. why shouldn't I run on the grass? Because we said so, you know. <laughs> and so many of us who were raised in the church and went through good catechesis even uh, were catechized, but never evangelized. Right. They were never introduced to a, a living, right. beautiful relationship with Jesus. And sometimes I even hear you're just kind of sacramentalized. Yeah. But nothing really steeps into the heart. Right. And uh, so I think, yeah, teaching the faith, that's so important. And what is the way of the ID 916? Yeah, so we, we tried to get as practical as possible with yeah. people in terms of there's a lot of big concepts we can talk about, but then like at the end of the day, what do you do? You right. know? And so we kind of laid out a couple different things. We want you to be praying, we want you to be studying, we want you to be connecting, and we want you to be giving. So praying every day, and, and each one of these can be catered or kind of personalized to your state of life, uh, your work rhythms, all these things. But every disciple should be praying every day. Every d disciple should be studying the scriptures and studying the, the mm -hmm. truth of the faith. Every disciple should be connected with other disciples and, and running together and, and supporting each other and living in the light together and holding each other accountable. And then every disciple should be giving, both of financially, but time, talent, and treasure. Yeah. Where can I, I give of myself for the building of the kingdom? Exactly. And even just doing a little spiritual reading, just 30 minutes a day goes a long way. Are there any like key texts or any key writings uh, for the ID 916? Yeah, uh, we, we kind of begin with scripture actually. Okay. You know, it sounds kind of like, well, well it's duh, a basic, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it's, uh, it's amazing how often or how rarely we actually read the word of God. And we wonder yeah. why we never hear his voice or what are we supposed to do with our life or all these things. And it's like, we got this incredible book with a lot of pages in it that if we just spent even 30 minutes or even five minutes, even one verse a night and just sat there and meditated on it, it's amazing what the Word of God can do when we let it work in our life. People will get back to some more questions right after this break. Can you talk a little bit about the chapters associated with uh, ID 916? Yeah, absolutely. So what we've done is taken what we experimented with in Ann Arbor to help young adults become mm -hmm. intentional disciples and uh, taken the principles and brought them to parishes and established partnerships with them, which we call chapters. Okay. And so currently we have 17 chapters across the country, and some of them are a single parish or some of them are multiple parishes working together. And basically, we come alongside them and do three major things. We want to help them build a leadership team of young adults and train them and empower them and equip them to really run the thing in the heart of the parish. Secondly, we build a, a monthly meeting we call a Disciples Night. Where okay. We have mass dinner and a talk, and this is something EWTN would like. We broadcast a talk live out of Ann Arbor the oh, first wow. Thursday of the month so that our chapters don't have to feel the pressure okay. of finding a five-star quality speaker every month. We do that for them. And so our chapters all over the country have their own mass, their own meal, and then they watch the talk that's happening live and tweet in questions and engage that way. And then the third piece is discipleship groups, so men's and women's small groups that meet on a more regular basis like every other week and work through some real authentic discipleship content to help them grow and go as we were talking about earlier. So we want to come alongside a parish and not be some sort of silver bullet okay. or kind of the end all be all for what's necessary for young adult ministry but to lay a foundation of evangelization and discipleship from which all the other wonderful things that the parish can offer service projects and social events and certainly the sacraments uh, can be part of the life of a young adult. And what is the Millennial Church Conference? What is that? Yeah, so I wish the, the motivation for this came from like a, a really like beautiful moment with God, but it actually came out of some frustration in me where I was uh. getting a little <laughs> tired of calling everyone into the ICs, trying to convince them that they should listen to what we're doing with ID916. So I thought, hmm, I wonder if I could get all the leaders in the diocese together for one day and just kind of bless them with content and then see what would happen. And so I partnered with a gal from Alpha and two young adults from Milwaukee, Pete and Emily Birds and Sarah Kazmarek from Alpha. And we put together a one day kind of professional development day for a diocese with the goal of reaching the pastor and anyone in the parish who can make a decision that would affect the life of a young adult. Okay. And that's basically everyone in leadership. And so what we do is for a one day, nine to four, we come into a diocese and we answer a couple questions. Who are young adults? What have they been saying to the church? What has the church been saying to them? 
and then some very practical strategies on how we can make our parishes young adult empowering. And okay. so the goal is not necessarily to have young adults come to the conference, it's actually for the people who can make decisions that would impact whether or not our parishes can actually reach out, connect with, and empower this generation. And if somebody wanted to get started in ID 916, would that be a good place to start? Yeah, that'd be a, that'd be a fun way to do it for sure, okay. is to have us come into their diocese. And uh, right now we, we try to do it as cheaply as possible for the diocese, okay. and we've come in, we've done five of them. And we come in for the day, and we, we put on this professional development day, basically, and then parachute out. And if they want to move forward with us, whether with ID916 or Alpha, or whether they're just better equipped to make their parachutes young adult empowering, um, that's what we're about. So, Pete, what is the summit? What is that? <laughs> yeah, so the summit is basically a weekend retreat that we invite everyone we're working with across the country to come to Michigan. And, and every year we pick a different theme. This year the, the theme was further up and further in, trying to help young adults get more connected to the Father and have a deeper prayer life. Um, and the goal is just to, to walk them through a, a weekend experience where they can put their phones away for a little mm -hmm. bit, they can connect with other people and, and really be blessed by uh, what the Lord wants to do on the weekend. And then we've started taking some of those formats and making little mini summits and doing them in each of our chapters and even some places that aren't yet chapters we've been able to do some ministry type events like that in order to kind of seed the soil and get things ready for potential either potential a chapter or just to reach the young adult community in a deeper way and especially with young adults what do you what clicks the most in getting them to be part of a group inside a parish yeah what nothing nothing works better than eyeball to eyeball communication okay uh, authentic friendship so uh, literal discipleship. <laughs> yeah, literally like me to you, yeah. you know, like you can do all sorts of different social media and that's great. You can do all sorts of different marketing and that's fine, but nothing's going to get somebody somewhere mm -hmm. better than I'm going to this thing. I think it's really great and you should come with me. And better yet, I'm going to invest in you first and get to know you, figure out what moves your heart, where you are with the Lord, and then, you know, decide what to invite you to instead of just a blanket statement like everybody should come to this. It's like, no, actually... Some people might do really well at a disciples' night. Some mm -hmm. people might do really well at the summit. Some people just need like five or six coffee dates before they're ready to do anything, <laughs> you know, because they want to have some trust and real relationship. And so to be able to genuinely invest in people's lives, yeah. get to know them, get to know their heart, get to know their spiritual life, whether it's there or not, and then know what to invite them to is, uh, is the best strategy we've right. found. Do you see a lot of married couples be part of the ID 916 yeah, as well? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, we, when we say 20s, 30s, married, single, with yeah. or without kids, it's a pretty wide range. And so each of our chapters has a slightly different demographic that mm -hmm. often um, they represent just by the nature of the parish. Sometimes it's young families, sometimes it's more single people. Um, you know, married life throws in a, another level of complication in terms of rhythms right. of life and yeah. scheduling and all that. But we found that what a, you know, a 29-year-old married guy needs is not too dissimilar to a 24-year-old single guy because they both need Jesus and they both need to grow in holiness and they both need to go make disciples. And so how they might do that might look slightly differently, but their need for some sort of environment to help them begin that process or establish that process or kind of bring that process to a fuller completion is, is necessary. And that's the beauty of a parish, right? Because right. parishes can be the hub of a wheel of all sorts of different lifestyles and, and rhythms of life, but you have a central place to kind of ground it, a central place to receive vision and, and kind of know where to go from there. Okay. And with ID 916, where is a good place if somebody wants to learn more information? Where can they go? Yeah, the best place would be to our website. Website. Uh, just id916.com. Uh, we're also very active on social media. Instagram's okay. our jam, so if you want to get a sense of what we are and what we do, Instagram's a good place to go, just at ID916. And then certainly the Millennial Church Conference as well, which is just okay. millennialchurchconference.com. Okay. Well, thank you, Pete. Thank you, brother. We now go against the current with Father Mark. Jesus tells us in Luke chapter 10, you know, he sends the disciples out pre to preach the gospel, and he tells them, I saw a Satan fall like lightning from heaven, that he himself rejoiced in their victory in proclaiming the gospel over Satan, that proclaiming the gospel, you know, defeats Satan, and he rejoiced in that. We have to realize that our struggle is not just against the world or against a worldly way of thinking, a worldly mentality, as Pope Francis says. But there's an angelic, a personal angelic being that's opposing us. 
He can make suggestions in our mind. He can prompt us. He can tempt us. He can orchestrate situa situations or circumstances that can create chaos and havoc. You know, St. Paul tells us in Thessalonians uh, 5, 6, that we are to cultivate all that is good, to rejoice in the good in the world. You know, so much time there can be a, a celebration of evil, of chaos. You know, one way to oppose Satan is just to rejoice and to live in the good, to live a life of love, of giving of oneself, to grow in the spiritual life. That's the way we oppose Satan, living the gospel. You know, Satan is like this current fighting us. We're trying to paddle upstream in. St. Teresa of Avila talked a lot about perseverance, persevering in prayer and the spiritual life. And she would say that God does not deny himself to anyone who perseveres. You know, if we avoid sin, fight, resist evil, persevere, God will be there for us, with us. He'll give himself to us. We will have a relationship with him that will bless us. So Satan is real. He's not a myth. We need to oppose them through prayer, good works, living a life of love, rejoicing in the good. That's how we fight against the current. What a great show we had tonight. Uh, Pete was a great witness. Oh, and yeah. it just brings to mind for me, too, just how important ministry to young people is in our church today. You know, talking about the activity of Satan in the world, he's really going after young people today. And there's so many things in our culture to lead young people astray. Pete is there with his organization, reaching out, trying to, to disciple young people. What a, so needed in the it church. It is. And a lot of times we don't think about it, but we do need community. We need the support of those around us, you know, to help us kind of grow in our faith. A lot of us, a lot of times don't know where to turn. There's a lot of distractions out there yeah, in the world. There's yeah, a lot of noises. Yeah. And it's easy to fall yeah. so quickly, especially in our day and times. Just turning on the TV, who knows what you'll see. Yeah. But having that community and being part of that, especially when you grow and take on a more active part in your faith, you know, and to reach yeah. out and to yeah. uh, really to go out there and to, to strive to be a, a Catholic that wants to be engaged in their faith. Right. Yeah. I hear it all the time from 20 and 30 somethings. Well, there's nothing for me in the church. You know, I feel like I'm just kind of flailing out there. And there's no sense of community. Loneliness yeah. is high. Anxiety yeah. is high among our young people. Depression. Depression. Yeah. And what I, one of the things that really intrigued me about Pete's program there is that in the parish, it forms a leadership team to form these 20 somethings, 30 somethings. Mm -hmm. So these men and women have to step up to be mentors, to help these young people be intentional disciples, to make that decision to follow Christ. And that takes some self-gift yeah. on the part of this team and the whole parish to support them. And that, that Vincentian missionary uh, video talked about volunteering and, and how discovering Christ in the marginalized. Mm -hmm. And I think our young people today you know, are hurting in so many ways. Oh, yeah. And they need the gospel presented. They need to be mentored. They need to be shown a better way. And certainly in serving them, we find Jesus in yeah. our own. And there is no situation. shortage of suffering in our world today. Mm -hmm. And part of, you know, living out our Catholic faith is embracing that cross. And it is hard to do, but we have to embrace it. And that's why we do need a community. Yeah. We need others to reach out to us. And we have to reach out to others, yeah. too. That's part of it. And that link between evangelizing and community community yeah. you know they're always interconnected you know we we evangelize we invite people into the communion mm -hmm. of the church we foster that communion by going mm -hmm. out it strengthens our own faith mm -hmm. and so it, it reinvigorates the yeah. parish and we as christians and a lot of people just don't know maybe they've never had jesus preached to them or anything yeah. taught to yeah. them there's yeah. a lot of that too so so that's our end of the vineyard challenge is to invite someone to church you know, accompany them in some way, help them in some way to introduce them to the faith. So many people need to hear the gospel. They need to be invited to this mm -hmm. communion, this community we're talking about. So that's your mission. That's your challenge this week. Invite someone to the church. And may our Heavenly Father shine His face upon you. May He give you His peace. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. We'll see you next week on Life on the Rock. Say